Well, that was... interesting. Certainly not what I expected. So Infinity Train just released its final season for now, with protagonists Ryan and Minji getting abducted together. It's a really unique take for Infinity Train, setting up some mysteries that we'll definitely get answers to, right? Well, <laughs> we'll see about that. But before we get ahead of ourselves, let's start from the beginning. Hey wait, you look different, and I've never seen you before. You know what, we'll talk about it at the end of the video, so stick around for some major channel updates. Now, on to the video. When book 3 ended, every single one of us was expecting book 4 to be about Amelia and Hazel, since Amelia was brought back in the 7th episode of that season, and according to Infinity Train Law, the 7th episode will introduce the protagonist of the next book. Well that didn't happen. Instead we're following Ryan and Minji, two old friends forced to work together to get off the train. Okay, I'm down with it. After all, the trailer shows them wearing 1-1 gear that Amelia was wearing in the last season, so there's real intrigue there. But is this book perfect? Mm, no, it, it's not perfect. I mean, this is where I have to come clean a little bit. This book is probably my least favorite of all the books. It's not, it's not bad. It's just different. Yeah, it sucked because there was no on-screen death. Okay, dark, but that's not really it. This season was just a bit rougher around the edges, that's all. So I'm gonna go into the good and the bad, presented in a convenient numbered list. Number one, a low energy conclusion. So yeah, this season's finale just didn't really live up to the energy all previous finales brought. And it's kinda true for the whole season, actually. Every book of Infinity Train really packs an emotional and action-packed punch, you know what I mean? And this one didn't really have that. I mean, come on, Simon's death scene? One for the ages, man. The final episode here just kinda ends with them reaching zero and leaving. Which makes sense narratively, I'll give it that. Because it's Infinity Train, it's about getting off the train. But it's never been that simple with this show. Book 1, taking down the conductor. Book 2, confusing the train with an unsolvable problem. Book 3, literal on-screen death and hitting what I assume is the high score for a passenger's number. Book 4 just kinda ends naturally. I mean, I wouldn't have any complaints if this were the first season, so my opinion may be, you know, flawed a bit, but Ryan said it himself. Go big or go home! And yeah, the creators wrote this season not knowing it would be the end of the show, I understand that. I just wish we had more of a complex problem at the end, you know what I mean? Something to do with their numbers being the same. They started to do something like that, but they didn't really explore it to its full potential, that's all. Number 2, a great opening. But while the last episode wasn't as hype as I think it should have been, the first episode actually exceeded my expectations. Episode 1, titled The Twin Tapes, great name by the way, had a really clever way of introducing us to our protagonists. We start off with a split screen, one showing Ryan and the other showing Minji. As we make our way through their childhood, we start to see them grow apart. And when they finally see each other again, the screens merge in a super smooth transition. It's a nice addition to the standard backstory routine, and I wish more shows did stuff like this. Whoever thought of that, I hope you got a raise, because they deserve it. Number 3, Chekhov's Misfire. Yep, you've heard me say it, you've heard tons of people say it at this point. If you set something up, you should answer it. Two big mysteries of this season were why they were dressed in these uniforms, and what it means to have two numbers. But we got those answers. The uniforms were probably just a thing 1-1 used to make the passengers wear, and was phased out by Amelia. And the numbers were the same because their problems stemmed from their relationship, so it was necessary for them to both be abducted. Okay, I can buy that, but it's not airtight. We never actually got solid confirmation on either of those points, especially the one about the uniforms. It's a theory, sure, but we never get a true answer. It might have something to do with the boots and Amelia's taking over towards the end, but still, it's just a theory. So they technically kind of followed through on this foreshadowing, but it's all implied is what I'm saying. That's why I'm calling it a misfire. It's not an incorrect way of telling the story or anything, I just think concrete answers to those huge mysteries would have been infinitely more satisfying. You see what I did there? It's just that Infinity Train has always been about the mystery of it all. And this season's mysteries weren't really mysteries, just stuff that was added but had no real payoff. Yeah, maybe they would have answered it in a future book, but this book was set in the past, so I doubt it. And it looks like book 5 was gonna be a movie. Fantastic. Thank you, corporate reshuffling. Number 4, Chekhov's Bullseye. But while they dropped the ball on that stuff, they absolutely did a great job with the antagonists. They weren't super creepy or anything like the conductor, 
but I can recognize when an antagonist is done well. There wasn't just one this time. An antagonist from a bunch of different episodes showed up at the end to crush our heroes. They don't, obviously, but it adds some real weight to the more episodic episodes of the season. And they even stole the time device from the iceberg car? I mean, I wasn't expecting that. The time device coming back is a textbook example of a Chekhov's gun. It didn't even really need to come back, but it having more uses than just changing the train car is a cool idea. So yeah, that was definitely something they did right with the villains. They're no Mace and Sieve, but they're alright. Number 5. Character drama is great, but overplayed. Book 4 definitely has the heaviest character drama of any Infinity Train book, and the jury's still out on whether that's a good thing or not. I appreciate the real human conflict presented here. I could feel the tension in each episode, but in my opinion, it took up way too much of the season. I mean, they really laid it on thick here. In my opinion, it just, it was just too much. I mean, at any moment, either Ryan or Min could explode on the other. I get it, it's part of their dynamic, but it made it hard for me to connect with either of them. I kinda just hated them both, to be honest. At first, I was completely on Minji's side, because I see myself more like him than Ryan, but then he started being a total asshat for a while, and it just kinda seemed out of character for him. They were both just kinda mean for way too long, I think. For me, Lake and Jesse had the best character dynamic because they had the most gradual but most rewarding character arc. So I think Book 4 just overcooked the drama this time by a little bit, and it kind of eclipsed the wonders of the train actually, an in in integral part of each season. So yeah, Book 4 definitely was not perfect, but I'd still call it good. I mean, this is Infinity Train we're talking about here. I haven't seen anyone else's reviews of this season yet. I wanted to go into this review with just my first reaction. Honestly, I'm curious what you guys thought of this season. Did it meet your expectations or did it fall short like it did for me? Let me know down in the comments so we can get a conversation going. I've been having a lot of fun talking with you guys about Final Space over the last couple days, so please do comment if you did or did not like this season. And before we get to the update part of the video, I'd like to give a shout out to user 16moons. He left a comment on my last Infinity Train video with his theory that 1-1 got his split personality from Ryan and Minji, with their differing personalities. And that theory was, I mean, kind of neither confirmed nor deconfirmed, really. It's a really satisfying explanation for their numbers, though, and their uniforms, and their connection with 1-1 in general. So 16 moons, if you're watching, I'd just like to say that I like your theory better than what we actually got. Take that for what you will. And the theory could still be true, but, you know. I like it too, it would make for a bomb-ass conclusion. Language? Language? Okay, that's all for this video. Comment below what kind of outfit candles my avatar should wear next. And, yes, I did update my channel avatars, adding two more. Everyone, I'd like you to meet Peach and Waffles, my new characters. They do have personalities. Peach is a bit sassier, while Waffles is always more optimistic. I mean, I'm hoping to have, like, full-on conversations using these three avatars in future videos. I think it'll be something cool and unique. You know, I haven't really seen this done anywhere else, and I am actually going to improve their designs quite a bit over the next couple weeks slash month. It takes a while, but it'll be worth it, trust me. Be sure to check out my Instagram for the full body sketch of today's outfit. No, oh, I can't help myself. I'm just going to show it here today. Always happens. I just, I really, I really like this one. I don't know. I really, I think, I really think I'm improving my shading game. So you can follow me over there for more questionable furry fashion, as always. And subscribe for more movie review slash video essay hybrids like this one. And also check out my Redbubble. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next Friday. Hey everyone, Waffles here. Today for our food review, we're going to be trying Dunkin' Donuts Caramel Macchiato Cereal. It's a bit strange. I never would have thought to turn this into a cereal. You know, it's actually not terrible. Would I ever eat it again in a million years? <laughs> No, never. But it's not complete garbage. You know, I think that's just the problem with these weird cereals. Their flavors are too niche. The only niche flavor that works is Cupcake Fruity Pebbles, because just, wow. Hey, are you done with the food review yet? Ugh, don't rush me. Waffles, honey, I've seen your audience retention. I'm sure the three people still watching don't care about your Dunkin' Donuts cereal. Anyway, we have to prepare for next Friday. Why, Peach? What are we gonna do next Friday? The same thing we do every Friday night, Waffles. Make another video. Final Space Season 2 review coming soon, bitch. Language. Language.